welcome to a lesson on how to graph the reflection of the basic rational function or parent rational function f of x equals 1 divided by x. Here we're asked to use the graph of f of x equals 1 divided by x, which is graphed here in gray, to graph g of x equals f of negative x and g of x equals negative f of x or the opposite of f of x. Notice here the relationship is we change the sign of the x values or inputs of f of x in order to determine the function values of g of x. And here, we change the sign of the outputs or y values of f of x in order to determine the function values of g of x. Let's see if you can understand why one of these is a reflection across the vertical or y axis and another is a reflection across the horizontal or x axis. The graph of g of x equals f of negative x is the graph of f of x reflected across the y axis. Again, looking at this notation here, we're changing the sign of the x values or inputs of f of x in order to determine the function values or y values of g of x. So for example, if this is one point on f of x, in order to find the corresponding point on g of x, we need to change the sign of the x-coordinate. If we change the sign of the x-coordinate, that would reflect the point across the y-axis or vertical axis, giving us this point here. So this is the reason why when we have g of x equals f of negative x, the graph of g of x is a reflection across the vertical or y-axis. And then if g of x equals the opposite of f of x or negative f of x, the graph of g of x is the graph of f of x reflected across the x-axis. Here we're changing the sign of f of x, which are y values, in order to determine the function values of g of x. So again, if this point is the point on our function f of x, and we change the sign of f of x, or change the sign of the y-coordinate, it's going to reflect that point across the horizontal or x-axis, giving us the point x comma, the opposite of f of x, and this is the point that will be on our function g of x. So going back to our two examples, for our function g of x here, we'd be changing the sign of the x-coordinates of the points on the parent function, which is a reflection across the vertical or y-axis. So let's say g of x is f of x reflected across the vertical or y-axis. So we'll use these six key points on the parent function, reflect them across the y-axis, and then graph g of x. So again, this is going to be a reflection across the y-axis or vertical axis. So if these points are going to be on the left, these points are going to be on the right. This first point is half a unit to the right. If we reflect it across the vertical or y-axis, it'll be half a unit to the left of the vertical axis. This point will be one unit to the left. This point will be two units to the left. Notice how the y values or function values remain the same. And now we'll go ahead and reflect these three points. This point is now two units to the left, reflecting across the vertical axis. It'll be two units to the right, which would be here. This point will be one unit to the right. This point will be half a unit to the right. If we reflect the vertical and horizontal asymptotes, they would remain the same because this is on the vertical axis and this is on the horizontal axis. And now we know the graph of g of x equals f of negative x passes through these three points and approaches the asymptotes and passes through these three points approaching the asymptotes. Next we have g of x equals the opposite of f of x or negative f of x. Here we'd be changing the function values or y values of f of x to determine the function values of g of x. If we change the sign of the y coordinates of f of x, it would reflect the graph across the x or horizontal axis. So let's go ahead and clear this. Let's state the reflection. g of x is f of x reflected across the horizontal or x-axis. So again, in order to graph g of x, we'll change the sign of the y-coordinates of these six points, which again will reflect the graph across the horizontal axis. 
So this piece of the graph will be below the x-axis. This piece will be above the x-axis. So this point is two units above the x-axis. After the reflection, it'll be two units below. This point is one unit above. After the reflection, it'll be one unit below. This point is half a unit above. After the reflection, it'll be half a unit below. This point will be two units above the horizontal axis. This point will be one unit above. And this will be half a unit above. If you reflect the asymptotes across the horizontal axis, again, they won't change. And now we can graph g of x equals negative f of x. It'll pass through these three points approaching the asymptotes, as well as these three points, and approach the asymptotes. And what you might recognize here is that the graph of g of x equals negative f of x and the graph of g of x equals f of negative x are exactly the same, but for different reasons. And let's verify this again using some graphing software. Here's a graph of the basic function or parent function f of x equals 1 divided by x. Now let's look at the graph of f of negative x, which gives us the blue graph. Because we changed the sign of the inputs or the x values, this is the reflection across the vertical or y-axis. And now it's also a graph the opposite of f of x, which gives us the green graph, which is the same as the previous graph, the blue graph. But here, because we changed the sign of f of x, or changed the sign of the y values of f of x, this is the reflection across the horizontal or x-axis. In this case, though, the horizontal and vertical reflections result in the same graph. I hope you found this helpful.